All right, welcome Clearly Essential team. This is our third Monday call. This webinar is actually replacing the team call we used to have on the third Monday of the month. We just weren't getting a lot of people participating. I think we're just gonna keep it in the 21st century here and abandon the teleconference and do this um, the new fashioned way. So you can see our faces. If you don't want your face on the recording, you can mute your video. <laughs> and if you do, that's great too. If you have questions throughout, if you are on Zoom, you can type those into the chat or hold them to the end. And um, if you're on the Facebook group and you have some questions, I'll be watching those. We can save that all for the end. That's the beauty of being live. We can um, have some questions, but we are recording as well so that we can share this in the future. And um, I am going to turn it over to Tracy Smith, who I think many of you know very well as our chiropractor, your chiropractor, and my friend, and she's a diamond leader on our team. And she presented this great talk about finding builders at our business training day. And it was so well received that um, I wanted to have her share it with us in this um, format as well. And um, if you are joining on Zoom, if you wouldn't mind actually going ahead and muting your video um, so that it doesn't block too much of the PowerPoint screen. I actually can't get to where I can do that while I'm showing the slideshow, but I'd appreciate that. So Tracy is going to teach us a lot about finding builders here. And I am excited to hear this again and learn right along with all of you. Thank you for doing this, Tracy. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, I am actually going to ask that you guys hold questions to the end. I love questions and I welcome them. It to me shows that people actually are interested in what you're talking about, but I am very easily distracted. So um, I'd love it if you would hold your questions. So that way um, I don't get off topic because that will happen. Um, but as you can see here from the slide that we have, the title of my presentation or what Crystal asked me to talk about was how to find builders for your essential oil business or your doTERRA business. But really what I found is that it was more accurately um, how to identify if you or yourself um, yourself or someone on your team is actually a builder really better than finding builders. It was more about how do I um, identify if I'm a builder and how do I identify if someone on my team is a builder and talking more about that because um, that really I think is the first step to building in general and um, I'm so you know humbled that people asked Crystal for me to repeat this or talk on it again um, I'm, I think it's fantastic it was so well received um, I know that in person, if you've ever seen me speak in person, I'm very bubbly and boisterous and jumping around the stage and my purple hair is flying everywhere. And um, I don't have the luxury of having so much freedom of my arm movement when I'm on Zoom. And so um, hopefully the energy that you guys will, uh, you, you experienced if you were at that team meeting, you'll still get that in this webinar version. So um, the first thing that uh, most people are looking for when we talk about finding builders is they're just like, okay, tell me what the formula is. What is it that I need to do to find a builder? Like one plus one equals two, and that is how I find a builder. And unfortunately, I hate to disappoint you guys, but that is not what you're going to get from this. Um, mainly because there isn't a formula on how to find a builder. Um, it doesn't exist. Um, and But there are some things that are... Uh, ways that you can um, figure out people who are builders. There are ways that you can help develop yourself into a leader or someone who attracts builders, but an actual formula, it just doesn't exist. So the first thing I do want to talk to you guys about is this idea of being a successful person or someone who um, attracts people um, into their life and just exudes success. When we do that, um, we have this idea oftentimes of a formula that goes something like do, have, 
B. If you do the things that you need to do, you'll have the things that you want in order to be the person that you need to be to be successful. And unfortunately, we have been taught wrong. That is not what is the accurate way to become a or be a successful person. It is be, do, have. Okay. So when you become the person who is successful, you will do the things that successful people do and you will have the things that successful people have. So if you look here, not do have be, okay. It's be, do, have. So write that down. If you guys are listening, be, do, have. So the first part of that is be, who do you need to be? Who, does it, who is it important that you become? And that is a really important part of overall general success as a person, as a business leader, as a leader in general, just as a person that people want to be around. You need to be a certain type of person. So working on yourself first You will then do things that successful people do. What are their actions? How do they act? And then you will have those results. When I say have the things that successful people have, I'm not saying um, like monetary necessarily. Sometimes when we say have, um, having something, we automatically go to this idea of monetary or um, uh, like tangible goods or things like that. I don't necessarily mean that. When I say have, I also mean things like, it says here on the slide, results. What are the results? What, are, what do we have as far as that? And that is the cycle of how we need to be consistently looking at improving ourselves, a be, do, have model rather than do, have, be model. That's not how it works. So when we talk about this be, this who do I need to be to be a person of success, we need, we're talking about characteristics of a leader. And so when we talk about characteristics of a leader, there are some general things that are characteristics of people who are um, the type of person that someone wants to follow. And the first couple of characteristics of someone like that is someone of integrity, morality, and someone who has ethics. And all of those kind of sound like the same thing. Um, They are a little bit different. They're not exactly the same word. They don't have the same definition. But all together, it's a person who is trustworthy and respected, right? A person of integrity, morality, and ethics is a person who you trust and who you respect. And if you're going to be a leader and have someone who is going to follow you, they need to be confident in the person that is leading them. They need to have confidence that they're going to be a person who is trustworthy and they need to be confident that they can respect and follow that person wherever they are going. So if you are sitting here thinking and almost evaluating your life and thinking, man, I lack some integrity. I don't stick by my word. My morality might be a little shaky. I might think, oh, those rules don't apply to me. Or my ethics might be a little off. Those are qualities that you need to start to really harness and you need to really start to hone in on because those are some really foundational characteristics that that a leader really needs to possess if they're going to be a very successful leader. So So um, those are important things. And taking that to the next level of being a person who is also ethical and how they deal with other people. So when you are running your essential oil business, since we're specifically talking about doTERRA, are you running your business ethically? Are you following the rules and the guidelines that have been set out by, um, you know, doTERRA as to what their culture is that they ask you to follow when you are part of uh, the doTERRA company? Are you following? following that? Are you thinking their rules don't apply to you or are you going along with what they um, are setting forth as how they want you to um, follow their their, uh, guidelines? So thinking about that is really good. Another uh, set of characteristics that are really, really important when you're leading others are self-confidence and belief. So Self-confidence is feeling confident in yourself as a person, as a leader, and um, that belief is having belief in what 
you are selling in this case. I, I know people sometimes get a really negative connotation with that word, but I'm going to just use it. I'm just going to throw it out there. Call a spade a spade. When you are selling doTERRA to someone, whether that be the oils, the company, the idea of the business plan, do you have belief in what you are talking to them about? Or are you kind of going like, eh, I mean, I don't really know if this works. I don't really know if the oils work. Um, I don't really know if the company is a good one to work for. Maybe they actually comp compensate how they say they do. Maybe they don't. I mean, where are you as far as your belief in this company that you work for? And how is your self-confidence? Are you confident in yourself as a person, as a leader, um, and just in your life in general? And those are some really important characteristics when we're looking at who is someone as a leader. Um, one of the questions that I get a lot of times is, are leaders born or are they made? And I think that's a really important question to some people because basically what they're asking me is, can leadership qualities be taught or is it something you basically just have to have ingrained innately part of who you are. Um, there are some people who, when they start off in this business or any business, they don't seem like they possess qualities of a leader. And does that mean they never will? Or does that mean they can be taught? And really, my opinion is, is that both of those are true. That some people have this natural thing. You can't even... Uh, explain what it is. You can't put your finger on it. It's a charisma that they just seem to have. They walk into a room and people are attracted to them. That cannot be taught. That is just part of who someone is, who their core is. But that doesn't mean that if someone doesn't naturally have that charisma or that thing that you can't quite put your finger on, other um, potential uh, leadership qualities cannot emerge. That doesn't mean that. Uh, you have the ability to be taught leadership qualities and become a very strong leader, even if you may not possess that natural charisma. One of the things that may be a little bit more challenging is that oftentimes if you're, you don't, um, you weren't born with that thing, right? That thing that makes you a uh, a natural born leader. Sometimes there are some qualities that have to uh, be um, maybe relearned or unlearned. Um, some things that um, maybe your natural tendency on how to speak or communicate with other people that don't really work as well when you're in a leadership position. So having to learn or unlearn certain things are going to be a little bit more challenging for someone who may not have that special something. Um, but that doesn't mean that they don't have the ability to be a, lead, a leader and a very strong leader at that. So I do think that uh, leadership qualities are something that can be learned. So um, basically, um, there are a few different things that um, I would tell someone who is in a leadership position who is trying to um, mentor or lead someone who wants to become a builder on their team. Um, there's a few things that I would tell them that they need to do or need to uh, kind of help bring out in someone who is trying to become a business builder on their team. So one of the, uh, I guess maybe tips uh, that I would give someone is that they need to, to some extent, fake it till you make it. So if you are someone who is wanting to do the business, but you are feeling like, I just don't know anything. I mean, I can't do this business yet because I don't know anything. Well, you are probably a person who needs to wrap your brain around the idea of fake it till you make it. And basically what I mean by that is that nobody has any idea what you don't know. So oftentimes when people get started in this business, they are overly self-conscious about the fact that they don't know every single thing about essential oils. So what happens is, is that they oftentimes become almost paralyzed by this fear that they don't know everything. So therefore they are not qualified to uh, speak, teach, or lead, um, when it comes to essential oils. And really, that couldn't be farther from the truth. 
if you go back and you think about the very first time you were introduced to essential oils, what you'll probably remember is the person who introduced you, you had no idea anything about oils and anything they told you was like an aha light bulb moment because you just had no idea before that moment. So what that person that you're introducing the oils to has no idea of is they have no idea what you don't know and what you should know. They have no idea. They don't know if you're supposed to know the chemical composition of lavender, and they don't even know that there is a chemical composition of lavender. So you cannot spend um, time being fearful of not starting because you just don't know everything. So in the beginning, you fake it. When you go to a class, if you don't know an answer of a question that was asked, you do one of two things. You either say, I don't know the answer to that, but I'll find out and get back to you and move on to the next person. Nobody is going to think that you're lame because you don't know every single question that is asked. So don't, don't be fearful of that. Get over it. Or a really great tip that I tell people is if someone says to you like, hey, what's a really good... Um, what's a really good idea for fibromyalgia or a good, really good oil for fibromyalgia? And you're going, I don't even know what fibromyalgia is. What the heck? How am I supposed to answer that? One of the best things you can do is you pull out your modern essentials book and you say, that's a really great question. Let me show you how you're going to find out the answer to that. So basically what you're doing is you're showing them how they're going to empower themselves by using their resource they have in front of them. And in that process, you may have no idea what the answer to that is, but what it's coming across as, you're just showing them how they're going to empower themselves. It's not like they're going, oh my gosh, she pulled out that book because she has no idea what fibromyalgia, what oils can be used for fibromyalgia. They're not thinking that. They're thinking, oh good, good, she's going to show me how I'm going to be able to find out this information too. So getting over those fears are really important. And in the beginning, when they feel so strong and so palpable, you need to fake it until you make it. So um, nobody knows what you don't know. Um, the next thing is that kind of piggybacks off that fake it till you make it is start already. So there are so many people who feel like they have to get the moon and all of the stars completely aligned before they're going to start building their business. And that is crazy. You just got to start already. If you are continuously worried about the, the fear of failure and it uh, paralyzes you, well, I guarantee you that you are going to miss 100% of the opportunities that you don't take. So if you are going to have any chance of being successful in this business, you have got to take that step and you have to to start already. So stop waiting for everything to fall into place in order to be the perfect time for you to start building, start growing, start doing mentoring, start holding classes, start talking one-on-ones, start doing X, Y, and Z because there is no perfect time and you're going to waste your time in the meantime. Um, and then the next one is, is that you have got to take the leap. So one of the biggest fallacies that, um, that people do when it comes to being a leader is that they hold the hand of their potential builder for too long. They hold their hand and they do everything for them. And if you think about what a mama bird does with a baby bird is when there comes a certain point in time where that baby bird's supposed to get on the nest, she pushes the bird out and that's how they learn to fly. And if your leader, or, or if you as a leader are constantly holding the hand of your uh, potential builder, teaching all their classes, giving out all their samples, talking to all of their perspectives, enrolling all their people, doing everything for them, they will never step into that position and feel confident to grow. And so you as a leader have to recognize that if you do everything for a builder, two things. Number one, they're not a builder. You may put that label on them, but if you're doing everything for them, they're not a builder. They're a placeholder. They're a duplication of you. They are you holding their own account. And number two, you are actually harming them 
because you're never allowing them the freedom to either fail or thrive. So you have got to um, let your people take that leap and you got to let go. So one of my rules is, is that I do three classes for people. The first two I teach and the third one I'm there, but they teach it themselves. After three, we're done. They then need to go out on their own, hold their own classes, um, you know, do their own um, consultations, one-on-ones, all that kind of stuff. They get three opportunities where I'm present and after that, they got to figure it out on their own. That's not because I'm mean. That's because I'm one human being. I'm one human being and they have got to learn to sink or swim. And if I'm constantly being their floaties, they will never learn how to swim. So you need to allow your builders to take that leap. So um, one of the things, those are all kind of things that you need to have a mentality towards those builders. But one of the things that I think is really important is as a leader, you as a leader trying to find builders on your team have got to start developing your intuition muscle. So one of the things that I think we do a lot in our society is we ignore our intuition when it comes to a lot of different stuff in this particular setting, business. We ignore our intuition when it comes to business. So what will happen a lot of times is people will come to you and they will say, I'm a builder, I'm a builder, I'm a builder, I want to build, I want to grow, I want my paycheck to be um, you know, completely uh, replaced by doTERRA income, I want to be a diamond, I'm going to hold classes, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm a builder, I'm a builder, I'm a builder, I'm a builder. And what their actions are is that they are not a builder. They haven't set up any classes. They haven't talked to any people. They haven't done any business building activities. They haven't enrolled any people. They have done nothing that indicates that they're a builder. And so what we do oftentimes as leaders is we get so overly excited that they're telling us they want to be a builder that we ignore our intuition and the actions they're actually showing us and we act as if they're a builder when the reality is, they're not. They're not builders. They're maybe a sharer. They're definitely a user, but they are not a builder. And I think that sometimes we, um, when we hear that maybe I want to be a builder, we get so excited about it that we project onto people that they are a builder when the reality is they really don't have any intention of doing that and don't want to do that. And when we do that, shame on us. It's our fault. It's our fault that we never really had someone that ever showed us that they wanted to be a builder. And yet we took on and ran with that idea without ever sitting down and talking to them about, you know, your actions aren't really those of a builder. Are you sure that you're not more of a user or more of a sharer? And they're sitting there, no, I'm a builder. I'm a builder. I'm a builder. I'm going to be a presidential diamond. I'm a builder. I'm a builder. And we allow them to continue calling themselves a builder and we allow ourselves to continue believing that they're a builder and we get frustrated and irritated and fed up with them. When the reality is, if we listen to our intuition and we looked at their actions rather than their words, we would have none of those things because we never would have given them the title in our mind of a builder because they never earned that. They never earned the title of a builder. So we have got to start using our intuition when it comes to the actual, um, the, the actual actions of those people on our team. So one of the things that I did at the presentation that um, I gave at uh, Crystal's Business Building Day was that I went through a few um, of the uh, people who are um, leaders on my team and on Crystal's team and went through some statistics because I want you guys to have an idea of what an actual builder looks like. So um, I interviewed uh, four people on my team, okay? So the four people that I interviewed were Jessica Beaver, who probably a lot of you know who she is, 
Crystal, you all know her, um, Lacey, she's one of Crystal's diamond leaders, and Laura Garcia, she's one of Crystal's diamond leaders. So um, I went through and I interviewed them and I asked them all the same questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and tell you um, what their answers were, and then um, you guys will get an idea of what actual builders look like. And I want you to take that and hold it up against where you are and then where some of the people on your team are. So um, Jessica Beaver is a uh, platinum on uh, my team. She's one of my leaders. Uh, the first question was, how many people do you have in your downline? Okay, so how many people in your downline? Uh, Jessica's answer was 1,494. So that's how many people are on her team. She's a platinum. And um, the next question was, how many personally enrolled silvers do you have on your team? She has four out of 1,494. She's got four personally enrolled silvers. Um, how many of those people said that they wanted to build from the time of enrollment? One. One person. Um, did you want to build when you came on? No. Do you still hold classes? Yes. Do you still enroll people? Yes. Okay. So um, right there, what I want to get across here is the reason I was asking these. Um, out of 1,400 people, Jessica has four silvers, four really strong people who are building on her team. Okay. Four. Um, as far as her personally enrolled, excuse me. Um, one of those people told her from the very beginning that they wanted to build. Um, she didn't want to build. She's one of the strongest people on my team. And she, as a platinum, is still enrolling and still holding classes. If you are not still enrolling and still holding classes, you are not building. Period. So, Sorry, that probably makes some of you really uncomfortable and really unhappy with me. But the good news is we're on webinar, so you can think about that honestly in the comfort of your own home, and you only are answering to yourself right now. So um, Crystal, our um, essential oils um, godfather, has about uh, 19,000 people in her downline. Nine of them are her personally, she has nine on her team who are her personally enrolled silver. And uh, what is that? One, one of them from the beginning told her they wanted to build. Um, let's see here. She did not want to build from the beginning. And yes, she still holds classes. Oh my goodness, Crystal still holds classes. And yes, she's still enrolling people. Um, Lacey has about 8,600 people in her downline. She has six personally enrolled. Two people told her from the beginning they wanted to build. Um, she did not want to do the business from the beginning. And yes, and yes, she holds classes and enrolls. Laura Garcia has 6,800. Four of them are silvers or above. One of them wanted to do the business from the beginning. Um, she didn't have an interest in doing the business from the very beginning. Um, yes, she still holds classes. Yes, she still enrolls. So the thing that I want to do here is finish up with giving you some definitions because, um, one of the, one of the biggest gifts that you can give to your, um, enroller is if you are not a builder, I promise you, you are not letting them down if you're not going to build and you tell them, I'm not a builder. You are freeing them. So one of my goals in this talk is to get people to open their eyes to whether or not they are actually putting themselves in a category that is accurate or if they are fooling themselves by saying they're something they're not. And so I want to give you guys a definition of sharers, um, builders, and really hardcore builders. And I want you to think about which category you fall into. And if you've been calling yourself a builder and you're not, that's okay. 
I promise you, that's okay. Nobody's going to be mad at you. But do me a favor and let your upline know so that they can breathe that um, you're not, you, you recognize that you're not a builder and that's okay. So um, the first thing is a casual sharer. Okay. So a casual sharer works up to paying for their oils over several months. They make one to two contacts a week. They listen to some training calls and webinars. They host a class every month or every two months, and they keep their 100 PV LRP to be eligible for commission. That's a casual sharer. Okay, so someone who does one to two contacts a week, listens to trainings and webinars, holds a class every month or two, and keeps their PV, LR, their 100 PV um, LRP, okay? So that's a casual sharer, guys. That's not a builder. Supplementing your income, which would be like a, um, a slow builder, maybe, is wanting to make about $1,000 to $4,000 they work three to four hours a week. They make a list of 100 plus interested people. They teach at, le at least one class a month. They invest in marketing materials. They keep their 100 PV LRP. They're on weekly trainings and they understand the compensation plan. That's just someone who is wanting to supplement their income. Someone who's wanting to replace their income works to make about five to $50,000. They do 20 plus hours a week. They commit to a 150 PV monthly. They invest in resource books, marketing materials. They go to convention. They set regular goals and have action plans to reach them. They contact daily three to five people. They have three business builders. They host teach and train. They hold weekly training calls and they do a half hour a day spent on self-improvement. That is a long list. You may not do every single thing in that list, but you're doing the majority if you are a true builder looking to replace your income. 20 plus hours a week, over a hundred PV order monthly having regular goals and action plans, contacting three to five people a day. You have three business builders on your team who are your personally enrolled people. You host, you teach, you train your team, you do training calls yourself, not only getting on these, but doing them with your own team. And you do a half hour a day on self-improvement. That is what a true builder looks like. So if you are not a true builder, that's okay. Nobody's upset with you about that. Give yourself a break, let yourself off the hook and start referring to yourself as a sharer, a committed sharer. That's awesome. Those are the ones who help build businesses, committed sharers. That's fantastic. So like I said, this talk is less about finding a builder and more about identifying the builders on your team and identifying if you yourself are a builder. So help your team and help your builders to establish good habits from the beginning. Encourage them to go out soon and quickly and encourage them to have be people of integrity, morality, ethics, Help them to become leaders, having self-confidence and belief in themselves and in doTERRA, and help them to become better versions of themselves. Be, do, have. When you do all those things and you help them in all of those ways, and they are going to be a good builder, you will see that really quickly. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be like elite after 10 days or something. Some of the slowest starters are the best people. So don't get overly concerned if someone isn't like a diamond right out of the gate. That's okay. Slow starters are really great oftentimes at being business builders. Um, but that core commitment to building your business 
has to be there in order for you to truly be a business builder. So um, I think that's it. I think that's pretty much everything that I talked about in my, um, my training section. I don't know how long that was. I don't have any kind of, yeah, yeah, it was about a half hour. Um, any questions or is there anything I didn't cover crystal that you, um, remembered from last time? I don't think there is a bit. I don't think so. I think it was really powerful at the live training when you had people write that on a piece of paper, you know, to mm -hmm. self identify and they, they wrote down sharer or builder and, you know, we didn't make anybody publicly stand up and like put it, you know, on their forehead yes. or, hold it up or whatever, but just for themselves to know, I think I'm a sharer or I think I'm a builder, but then now I realize I'm a sharer and right. I've had such great feedback since then about how empowering it was um, and how convicting it was just to realize, oh, okay, maybe I'm not actually who I thought I was in this business. Maybe my commitment is less or maybe it's even more, you know, and that's a very empowering thing to just have that knowledge and know your identity um, and to know that it can change too. a lot of people who are just users gradually turn into sharers and those sharers gradually turn into builders. That's how most of us in our leadership have been partly because none of us went out intentionally looking for or trying to recruit builders. We were just sharing oils and that's still what we do. And most of us have at least, you know, 85% of the people on our teams are users. And I think those statistics are really telling um, just like for me out of the, I don't know, hundred plus people I've personally enrolled, nine of them became silvers or above um, and, you know, same for the others out of the, you know, in the 19,000 people on my team um, that I enrolled, 100 of them. Well, that speaks really well of residual income and duplication and all of that. But just the fact that nine of them, you know, are truly leaders. And there's a distinction for that people can make, too, is there is a higher level beyond just builder, and that's leader. And that's a role that you have to step into. And you, t you talked about that, but just for people to, um, to realize too, that might be, you might be a very committed builder, but not really be leading anyone. Mm -hmm. and that might be a time when you need to look at, well, how am I portraying that I want to have people join me in this? And am I even asking people, am I talking about that part of this business? Am I um, actively Per, you know, building myself and developing myself as a leader? Am I reading leadership books? Am I listening to leadership podcasts? Am I going to leadership trainings um, to become and learn how to become a, a good leader for my team? So those are some good questions to ask yourself as well. And we talked also at that business training day about being a CC builder, which means committed and capable. Do you have both of those C's? And Tracy, you've talked a lot about what that really means through those activities, that's commitment. And then at the beginning, you talked about capability. Well, we can all grow in our capabilities and skills. That's the good news. We can all learn the skills. None of this is you know, rocket science. And we can definitely all learn the skills. Some will learn faster, some will learn slower, or just the schedule, their life experience up to this point. Some people are already leaders in a previous career. Some people have never spoken in front of one person, you know? So it's gonna be different for each person, but anyone can learn the skills, but I can't teach you the commitment, you know, and that's, um, that's something that you have to decide within yourself. So I hope you'll really take some time to um, just introspect, just really evaluate yourself and talk about maybe with your mentor or your significant other or someone who knows you really well, knows what your goals and dreams are, you know, how committed am I? What am I willing to do? How many hours a week? And then block out your time go, you know, I really am a builder. And Tracy said, you know, I need to work a minimum of 15 hours a week or, you know, that's, so I don't have that right now. Where can I make that? I'm not doing that right now. Look at your schedule, block it out and show up for those hours, just like it were your job, that if you don't yeah. show up, you're not going to get paid. Um, yeah. and really be that committed to working the number of hours that you need to, to make those number of contacts, to go to those events. So, you know, budget. And it's like, 
Dave Ramsey says Christmas comes every year, but every year people act like they're so surprised it's time to buy Christmas presents, right? <laughs> and convention comes every year too, you know, <laughs> it's the same concept. So really be planning ahead and thinking, um, what are the activities I need to be doing and, and how do I need to plan ahead for that? So just great points that you brought out and I hope that we all take time to um, do this periodically. A lot of times, oh, it's the beginning of the year, we're setting new goals. Well, that's not the only time we need to kind of no evaluate right I will say that I think that that's there's a there's a question uh, crystal if you want to look at that while I'm making this point I think that that is a a huge point about true business builders are going to be at convention it doesn't mean like nothing ever comes up like someone in your family gets ill or you get ill or something like that but I'm going to tell you that there were so many seven and a half month pregnant women there I had my like three month old baby there. Um, it is, there are very few excuses as to why you can't be there. I get two weeks of vacation every year. I spend one week at leadership and one week at convention. Do you think that I want my only vacation time to be spent going and effectively working? No but I do it for a purpose. So when people say like, well, I don't have the time to do that. I'm like, Hmm, what's my pet peeve y'all? You don't have the time to do it, but I have all kinds of excessive time in my life. No, I'm sorry. I got the same 24 hours in a day as you do. And I have just as many things that can occupy them as you do. I choose to make it a priority because this is a priority for me. So um, if you don't want to do it, that's fine. But just say, I don't want to do it. Don't say a thousand other excuses. I just can't. I mean, that's like needles on my skin. I just can't do it. Yeah. Totally get it. Yeah. And that's, it's true. We make the, um, the sacrifices we're willing to make. We put aside some things in order to reach the goals. We make priorities. We all do. We all decide how we're going to spend 24 hours or if we don't decide life just kind of happens, right? You don't reach yep. any goals that way. So, um, good point. So, um, the question, yes, this will be available later. We're recording it. Um, should I continue to mentor committed sharers into becoming builders or just let them manifest themselves as whatever they are to become in time? Do you want to answer that first, Tracy, or you want me to? Well, my initial instinct would be, do they want to become builders? Are they seeking that or searching that out? Because if they're not giving you any, any indication that they want that, then my, t my information would be, let it go with grace. I mentor people who actively want to be mentored because that is a co-commitment. It is my time. It is their time. I am willing to give them my time, which is like a gift, if they're willing to give me their time out of commitment. So to me, you are willing to put forth that time to anyone who is staying committed to it and showing you that they're going to do the action steps that you guys decide together are they're going to do. If they stop showing up for mentoring calls and they're not taking your advice or your, in, your um, recommendations of how they need to go or grow, then I would say that you let them go in grace. Mm -hmm. That's me though. Yeah. Well, and a lot of you know that I was in um, Europe for a little over a week doing a training with Elise and Patrick Shedevy, who are the only triple diamonds in our company. And they kind of make a further distinction. We're talking in pretty general terms and just kind of lumping builders into the builder category. Um, but Elise does kind of separate part-time builder, full-time builder, and leader um, within that category of builder. So a part-time builder can still be a builder. They're just on a slower track. They're, they're committed, but they're also you know, maybe only able to work 10 hours a week or, you know, less. And so she would give them a 30 minute mentoring session if they're a part-time builder. If they're a full-time builder, really um, on the fast track, really wanting to reach some big goals in a shorter amount of time, willing to work like 20 hours a week, she considers them a full-time builder. And if she personally um, enrolled them in their qualifier, she gives them an hour a week um, mentoring session or strategy session. Um, so that, was, that was a distinction that she made um, when she was talking about mentoring. And she also said she personally continues doing that hourly um, per week until the person becomes diamond. 
and then it's up to them if they continue to want that regular mentoring or not. Um, but those are her qualifiers too. So that's not necessarily everyone she ever enrolled who became a builder. She places very carefully and structures her team so that everyone is under a builder if they're not direct to her. They're under a builder who's a leader who can mentor as well. And so she partners with the, the people who are in the sponsorship line and she makes that clear from the beginning. And that's something that I may, um, may record some of what I talked about in the placements training because that's kind of a whole separate training. But just to answer your question, support people where they are and help them get where they want to be. That's really the simple answer. If they are a sharer and they're happy being a sharer, that like, all I ever wanted was to make up the cost of my oils so I could buy as many oils as I wanted. Now I'm making $300 a month and I am so happy making $300 a month because I can buy $150 a month in oils and still have a little extra for my tools and resources or whatever. Great. Love them there, support them there, help them do what they have to do to maintain it. Um, but don't try to push them into being something else if that's not what they want. Um, you know, so should you mentor them? Yeah, to an extent. Um, but you shouldn't be mentoring them for an hour every week if they're a sharer. You should be supporting them where they are, helping as they need it. Um, and yeah, they might grow into a builder. But you can have those conversations. You can say, it's time to evaluate. I see you doing more. I see you like showing up at more, more things. And you just want to know, are you still content being where you are? Are you trying to grow this business? And, and ask. You should know kind of what their goals are if it's someone you're supporting. So um, yeah. help them reach it, whatever that looks like for them. Yeah. Um, and how do you pick a mentor? You don't really pick a mentor. Whoever... <laughs> Whoever enrolled you is your mentor in this business. So um, if you if someone enrolled you and they're absolutely not even building or leading, that does happen occasionally. Sometimes people think, I think I'll share oils a little bit. And then they end up enrolling someone who is sharing and building at a higher level than what they are. So it's basically when a sharer enrolls a leader or something along those lines. That does happen because, you know, it's just the person who first introduced you um, you may need to, um, you, if you've grown beyond what the, where that person can support you, you may need to go up for, upline further and go to the next, you know, nearest silver and say, hey, I think I need a little bit more um, leadership training or I need a little bit better help with placements because, you know, my, my mentor, my enroller, whatever, doesn't really understand since they haven't had to do this before. Um, but I don't also think that it really matters people can get really fixated on this right oh my upline isn't elise shadavi so i can never be successful or whatever if i had been enrolled by elise shadavi think where i'd be now that's not how it works you really you don't need an upline um you i mean it's great to have one obviously we have a really supportive team we're doing this right now this just shows you we have a team of leaders who are committed to your success and people like tracy are doing this knowing that there's a lot of sidelines who are not on her team, who are going to benefit from this training. So we help you in a lot of ways like that. And I try to offer a lot to my team, but I can't personally mentor, you know, 19,000 people or even 50 people. I just, that's not possible. Um, and so really for me, I learned that a long time ago too. There was a time when my enroller, our blue diamond, Tanya Cottrell was really, really busy focusing on her other legs. I am her strongest leg. And, um, you know, that I understand that she was always there for me when I had a question, but we weren't doing weekly mentoring. We weren't having regular strategy sessions. She was just there when I needed to call her. And I knew she was very, very busy with other aspects of her life. And I realized that to get a paycheck every month, I don't need an upline. I need a downline, right? So I can go out and build that and I can get training from a lot of different places, YouTube. And I mean, it's all over the place now, right? And yeah, I need the encouragement and support of my upline. And I know if Tanya wasn't accessible, I could reach out to Melissa or Natalie occasionally, but I've never really had a mentoring session with either of them. I've asked them a quick question, like when Tanya was out of the country traveling or something, but I don't, I don't rely on them. And really, I don't even rely on Tanya. I love that I have her and I'm so thankful for her, but I know that I have to dig deep within myself to be the leader I'm going to be to show up for my business and um, to build the team and support the team that I have. Um, and so that's kind of a long answer, but really um, you don't pick your mentor. You have a team and upline who are willing to support you. And I fully believe anybody can come into this 
enroll, you know, under a user, maybe accidentally just, you know, oh, well, she happened to be using the products. And so I figured out how to enroll under her online or something because she told me about it somewhere and never have any support from that person. But just being connected to our team trainings, mm -hmm. and the things that we offer to everyone, learn how to do this really well and succeed. And I'm not devaluing encouragement and personal mentoring and strategy sessions, but I think sometimes too much emphasis is put on that and people think I can't ever succeed because my mentor isn't XYZ person and, and it shouldn't be that way. Look at, you know, we all have different strengths and that's um, something that I've pointed out to people through the strengths finder training is your strengths are not going to be the same as your upline strengths or your downline strengths. And we're all in this team together for a reason we can um, utilize each other's strengths and work together and be so much stronger than if we all had the same strengths. But sometimes we focus on each other's weaknesses when we're trying to look for someone to blame. So I encourage you not to do that. Look at the strengths that um, the people around you have and how you can contribute to each other. Agreed. Awesome. Let me see if there's any questions on the Facebook. Um, do I mentor sharers every week? No. Mm -mm. I would say, um, that you mentor builders every week, personally enrolled builders who don't have another person that can support them um, in where, where they're placed, right? But sharers, you just let them know, I am here for you. And what you'll normally get is, um, you know, and you can check on them once in a while. They'll appreciate that too. Just, hey, I was just thinking about you. How are you doing? If you have, you know, a minute to make a phone call or just send a text or whatever, but let them know, I am here for you anytime you have a question. And what you'll get from sharers usually is once in a while, you know, I forgot how to enroll someone because it's right. been so long or, you know, I, I don't remember how to find the special of the month and I had someone actually thinking about enrolling because what are they going to enroll somebody every few months or something if they're a sharer? Mm -hmm. So you'll get things like that or, you know, um, maybe usage questions and you can gently remind them, we, I have the same resource book you do. You know, I don't happen to have it with me right now. Do you think you could look that up? And um, and then if you need more ideas, let me know. Just make sure they're utilizing the resources that we all have uh, if they're asking usage questions. But as far as, um, you know, actual business building questions, they shouldn't really need mentoring every week because what you'll find is, and, and really even through um, circle mentoring that Tanya offers and some different mentoring programs that I've done over the four years I've been in this, it's, I've, I've heard that, you know, you give people some things to do each week that they need to work on three things, for example, that will move them forward. And then you talk to them the next week and they haven't done any of those three things. So, well, there's not really any need for us to continue our call today. So, um, you know, continue working on doing those three things we talked about last week uh, because you don't need to waste your time, right? And so sometimes it gets to that point when you're the mentor. Um, and I'm not saying don't give them chances, you know, don't um, offer your help, but a weekly call is going to get really tedious for you and not help them move forward if they're not showing up to do the things that you're telling them to do. So that's, and I've actually had to do that before. I've had to say, so, you know, did you schedule those classes? Did you make those phone calls? Talk to those people we talked about last week. And I've heard, you know, I haven't really done anything this week. I'm going to be honest. And you know, my reaction, I'm just very direct. I'm like, okay, love ya. But you know, I've got a busy, thriving business here, and I've got other people that um, are waiting to be mentored who are willing to do those things, and I want to support you where you are, and your actions are, you know, telling me that you maybe don't want to move as quickly as I was trying to force you, and I never want to force anyone. I never want to drag anyone, so maybe I was giving you a little bit more than you wanted to do, or maybe your goal is different. Maybe, you know, and that's one thing as mentors that it's really good to have um, regular check-in sheets and goals and activity at the beginning of the month, you know, this is their goal, this is their activity. Oh, so you wanna be elite, but you only have two classes. Well, we need to increase your activity or we need to change your goal. And every week you can do that. Okay, so do you have more activity? No, okay, well then, then we probably need to just make your goal more realistic. And if your goal in, is just to do two classes a month and see what happens, then you're not really, building actively you're kind of seeing what happens and and, and that's, that's what you want that's okay you know that's your business but um I, there's probably not a reason for us to talk every week and you can go let's you know every other week or maybe once a month but it's not like you're saying i'm cutting you off i'm never going to talk to you but you're using your time wisely right for mentor 
Hope that helps. Um, and that's the only question I see on Facebook. All right, if I look like I'm looking down, like, you know, texting periodically throughout this recording, I'm checking questions, okay. not playing a game on my phone. Uh, <laughs> I think that is all the questions that we had. So thank you so much, Tracy. I really appreciate this. And I hope that you all will talk to, like Tracy said, talk to the person who enrolled you or the person who's mentoring you and let them know, hey, I really, you know, I listened to that training and I got to be honest, this is where I'm at or this is where I want to be, or I was calling myself this, but I'm actually this. And, uh, and that's good. It, the more honest and direct we are, the better we can support each other, right? And that's what we all ultimately want to do is not to push, not to drag, but to support and to help and uplift and, and edify one another to reach our goals. And um, so that's what our hope is for you. Thank you so much. Good night, everyone. Good night, Tracy. And we will talk to you soon.